everyone, it's Mr. Zarzak, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how velocities can be added together just like displacements can because they are vectors as well. So to demonstrate that, I have this little, little wind-up toy rover here. Okay, and so if I just wind it up, we set it to motion on this little cart. Okay, it moves from one side of the cart. Well, almost over to the next side. Apparently, I need to wind it up a little bit more, but you can see it rolls across, okay? So I'm going to take it just on the board just to keep it simple. Okay, so just imagine it starts on this side, so that's my starting side. Okay, and then it ends over here. Okay, so we can think about this in terms of vectors. I can think about this in terms of like a displacement vector, so we go from here to here. Okay, um, it's moving in time, all right, and so if I think about this in terms of velocity, okay, so remember like, so speed is just the distance over time. Okay, your average speed anyway, and your average velocity is your displacement over time, where your displacement is a change in position. We went from here to here. Okay, so here is speed and velocity the same, but in the same direction. All right. Um, what would happen if I set the platform in motion? So think that I have like people movers at the airport. Okay. Well, we're still going to start at the same location. Okay, but as it rolls across the cart, I'm gonna push the cart too so that the cart moves. Okay, so same starting location, but now watch. All right, and I have to turn the camera for you to see. Okay, but it's over here, right on the edge of the board. Okay, like I just, I stopped it right at, right at the edge over here, so it's gone a lot farther. Now, the thing is, is that the car, the little car moved across the cart Okay, because the wheels were spinning, right? So it was carrying itself from this location to that location. It took the same amount of time as it did before, but now I've covered more distance. Okay, well, why did that happen? Well, there's still this component to the velocity of the cart, but now I took and I pushed the cart right along with the car. So there's this other component of the motion. There's another vector. And we know what vectors do. Vectors add shift to tail. Okay, and the result goes from where you start to where you finish. See, so by pushing the cart forward, okay, we actually caused the little car to go a farther distance. It went from here all the way over to here in the same amount of time. It means it's going faster. The resulting velocity of the cart is greater because I've added in another component to the motion by rolling the cart that the car was sitting on top of. That's a mouthful, all right? So now let me bring this back. I'm gonna repeat this one more time, okay, except we're going to let the car move across this car, so we start at the same spot. Okay, but now as the car's moving this way, I'm going to move the cart this way. I mean, come on, how many of us have tried to walk up the down escalator or down the up escalator, right? You know what's going to happen. If you've been to the, if you've been to the airport, you've seen those people movers, okay? They're fun to let you move, move you, but they're also fun to walk against. So here, let's see if I can match the speed of the car this way to the speed of the car that way. Watch what happens. I said, that's pretty good, all right? The car winds up ending at the same spot that we started from, okay? And so overall, we, if we start and we finish at the same place, well, then we have an overall displacement of zero. Now, how does that work? Well, again, there's two components to the motion. The car did this, but the cart did this. It's still just two components of the velocity that we say, okay, tip to tail, start to finish. Well, we started here and then we ended here, so if I was gonna draw the result vector, there's nothing to draw. Okay, here effectively our displacement is zero. Okay, and if our average velocity is just our, how our displacement changes with time, well, no matter how much time this takes, if we end up back where we started, well, then we have a sum velocity, resulting velocity of zero. Okay, even though the car is moving and the cart is moving together, they cancel each other out. That's pretty neat. Now let's look at this from a little bit different perspective. Okay, so I've altered the snare a little bit here. I've got the camera overhead and I've got my, my little car here sitting on top of this blue paper. You'll see why I'm gonna do this in just a second. All right, I'm gonna have the car just move straight, straight across the blue paper. I'm just gonna mark the location. See, so we're gonna start here, okay? So I'll take, wind up the car. All right, let it go straight across. <laughs> and so it ends over here somewhere. Just like that. OK. 
okay? And so we could talk about it. It covers this displacement. If we timed it, we could work out the velocities of V is equal to D over T, at least the average velocity, okay? So again, just let it go straight across. Now, the reason that it's on the blue paper, okay, is the blue paper is supposed to represent water, okay, specifically water of a stream. And our little rover here is, imagine it's actually a boat and it's sailing across the stream, whether it's using sails or using a motor, it doesn't matter. It's just trying to move across the stream. All right, well, if the water is calm, all right, well, then nothing about this really changes other than we're using our imagination to pretend like this is a boat, but streams have currents, okay? So I want you to imagine in your mind that the, that the, the stream or the river is flowing in this direction, okay? And so I can move the paper to simulate that. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna set my little rover to sailing across our, our hypothetical river here, okay, with the stream flowing in this direction. I'm still just gonna point it straight across the river, okay? And then as it goes, I'm gonna move the construction paper. Watch what the little car does. Okay, look at that, it lands somewhere over here. So let me mark that. Okay, it's pointed straight across the river, right? Like at no point does the little car ever face anything but the direction that we pointed it, but because the medium through which we're moving, because the water is not static, because the water is in motion, okay, that affects overall what happens to the car. Now, the car is going this way, so it still takes the same amount of time to get across the river, but... Okay, it actually goes along this diagonal path, which means that it actually travels a farther distance across the river than it would if it just went straight. It's covering more distance in the same amount of time. That means it's going faster. Why does that work? Well, it's because velocities add. So here, let's take away the stream. We'll keep our marks. Okay, and so if we map out, like let's say this, this arrow here, that represents just the, the, the little car bites up or our little hypothetical boat. Okay, that's one velocity vector. And then we've got the river, so the river is flowing in this direction, so I need another arrow, okay, so like this, all right, notice I've got this like tip to tail. Okay, the result of this is that the path, the overall path of the boat is like this. Okay, now we can think of these as displacement vectors, all right, that add together to get a resultant, or we can think of them as velocity, okay, because the, the little car is moving down the stream for the same amount of time that it's moving across the stream. Okay, the result of that is that it takes this path, all right? D over T, that's your average velocity. Okay, so we've increased, it actually goes faster, all right, because it's pushed off course, like it travels a farther distance in the same time, all right? This is the way that we've put together components of velocity to get a resultant velocity. It's pretty neat. Now, something a little bit more advanced, okay, is if we actually want to navigate, so like, if we just try to sail straight across the river here, Okay, we're gonna get pushed downstream, but, but, but what if we don't wanna get pushed downstream? Like if I wanna set sail from here and I, I really need to land over here, maybe this is where the pier is, this is where the dock is that I have to go. Okay, well then I gotta deal with that some. So the, the answer is I gotta navigate. Okay, so how do I navigate? Well, you gotta fight the current. All right, and so if the stream is flowing in this direction, well, that means that to some capacity, I'm gonna to have to actually change and turn into the current Okay, now I'm not gonna just turn straight, that's not gonna get me across the river. I need to have some component of my motion that's still across the river, right? So this is, you know, up and to the left or something. Okay, well I gotta set it up so I just have just the right amount of up to fight the current down, all right, the river. So here, watch, let me see if I can show this to you. So I'm gonna wind up the car, okay, I'm gonna angle it this way, and as the car is moving up this way, the stream is flowing this way, and if I get it just right, okay, those two effects factor one or each other out, and you'll see, actually see the car moving across the river, straight across the river like this. Let's see if I can get it just right, here we go. That's pretty good. Okay, that's the idea. Now, if I was gonna try to map this out, vector-wise, wasn't the picture a little bit different? Okay, the pieces that I don't have control over is, is the river is flowing downstream, okay? So like the fact that there's this, this motion, this component, okay, coming from the water, we can't do anything about it. The other thing I cannot change is the fact that how fast the boat can go on its own, okay, is, doesn't have anything to do with the river, okay? That's either coming from the sails or it's coming from the engine, all right? And so what I need to do is I angle myself, okay? And really I'm just adding vectors. So the tip of this one goes to the tail of that one, okay? So I add components tip to tail and I just draw the resultant from where I start where I finish, see the sum of the black arrow plus the blue arrow gets the green arrow, which is what we want, which is straight across the river, all right? This is actually gonna slow us down a little bit because we're spending some of our boat's velocity to fight the current, all right? If you wanna think about this in terms of components, okay, well, just the black arrow by itself, okay, has a component that goes, that goes this way, 
okay, and it has a component that goes this way, okay, so like the upward component, okay, from the boat cancels out the downward component of the river and we're left with just the sideways component from the boat that gets us across the river. So that's a brief overview of the way that we navigate, okay, to compensate. Right? Okay.